All right, a lot of people got rich investing in digital currencies like Bitcoin and crypto and Ethereum in the last 10 years, but the last years have been tough. Bitcoin's down, I think, like 60% from its 2001 high. So we didn't know what to do. I'm not the guy to ask, so I brought on the founder of Digital Edge Wealth Management, Zach Daniel, here to give us the inside scoop on what we need to be successful investing in digital moving forward. So, Zach, how's it going, man? It's going great. I think it's a, it's a great time to talk about this, and I'm excited to give some insight. Absolutely. So so let's talk about, I mean, there's a lot going on the last couple of years. you got the FTX scandal, like the regulators are trying to get their hands involved here. What do you see? I'm like, with, is, is there still trust in, in, in the crypto market? How, how's your how's your kind of outlook? Yeah, it, it's definitely been chaotic and I've been a part of it for a better part of a decade. So I've seen definitely the ups, ups and downs and, you know, the, the 50, 70, 80 percent swings. You yeah. know, it's it's volatile. It's tough to stomach, but it's it's not that uh, it's not that uncommon for this space. Um, and I think, you know, something to take away from the last couple of years is there's a large differentiation between Bitcoin and crypto and everything else. Yeah. And, you know, when we talk about the regulatory space that has been shown from the SEC, that Bitcoin is in its own separate category. And really, when you hear a lot about the SEC enforcement or cracking down on stuff, it's about the other side, all the other alt tokens, Ethereum, Solana, all the other crypto projects. So the SEC has been pretty clear about where Bitcoin stands. Um, so that, you know, that's something to think about uh, when you're thinking about the regulatory space. But yeah, FTX um, and other big names that went down, that's a huge hit on trust from both the retail and institutional side as far as coming in into the space because uh because you know yeah tom brady and steph curry and all these uh firms in, in even in washington were all on the bandwagon of FTS. they're not putting and, their names on anything anymore no, for the next no, several it, years it, that's it, for sure yeah it turned into it really set the space back um mm -hmm. and you know people are like is it going to recover is it going to ever come back and i think bitcoin fundamentally is an asset is as strong as it's ever been. The networks yeah. continue to grow. More users have continued to hold, buy, sell, trade Bitcoin. The Lightning Network has developed exponentially as a way to send Bitcoin peer to peer, uh, basically free. So you know the base layer of Bitcoin is slow and cumbersome, but that is because of the security. But the Lightning Network is the the layer on top of Bitcoin that allows for you know global scalable transactions in Bitcoin. And we've seen that implementation in uh, countries like El Salvador um, yeah. on the ground. So I think the Bitcoin network is in a wonderful state uh, and price, I, I believe, will follow um, into the future. But so it sounds like you're, you're, you're bullish on, on, on Bitcoin, but you, you, you made a delineation of separating Bitcoin from kind of the other altcoins and, and the rest of the kind of digital currency space. So, so what do you think about everybody outside of Bitcoin? Is, is, do you think that market is still going to recover? Or do you think that's going to take some time? I think it will. Um, it, it, I think it will recover. It just depends which projects have real staying power, right? Ethereum has, has pretty well established some staying power. There's so many projects built on top of it. It yeah. it's survived multiple cycles. You know, um, it's relatively uh, technically robust. Uh, but there's other projects that, you know, if you look at the top 15, 50 cryptocurrencies year by year, it's really rare to see the same projects in there. So yeah. that's where you know, say, I do think the rest of that will recover and there will be some some real gems out of that. But it's about, you know, finding those diamonds in the rough because 98 percent of them are, you know, I want to say worthless, but are not going to pan out like like people think for longevity sake. So when you're thinking about investing for the long term, a lot of those other projects outside Bitcoin, you cannot rely on for long term investment valuation you just have to it's kind of more of a short-term play you almost look at it as a short-term or like like a startup you know hey you know yes exactly are gonna, are, gonna, are gonna fail you know it's a vc model 99 are gonna fail but that one unicorn is gonna pay for everything and and, and, and make you nice and profitable so exactly. okay you're bullish on, on bitcoin and it's a little bit hesitant on some of the some of the alts and kind of the smaller ones that are that are kind of up and coming but what's the best way to kind of get get that exposure right now and moving forward yeah, so there's a few ways you can play it. You can you can play it by just buying Bitcoin directly on like an exchange like Coinbase or Gemini, um, Swan. Uh, you can in, or you can take possession of it directly in your wallet, which takes a little bit more technical know-how. But you can play it directly. Um, you could bu buy Bitcoin miners. Now this one is is highly volatile, and I, I probably would recommend most people don't do this. 
because a lot of those Bitcoin miners are technically overvalued from a cash flow perspective, and they're really levered to huge Bitcoin price swings. So when Bitcoin moves from, say, hypothetically 28 to 50,000 in two weeks to a month, those miners will outperform. But overall, they're not a good investment. Yeah, they're only a momentum play. So that's one way to get exposure. But just understand that that's it's not probably not the best or the best for you know longevity. Mm-hmm. Uh, MicroStrategy holds a lot of Bitcoin, publicly traded company. That's a way to get exposure. If you can't get Bitcoin exposure directly, which a lot of depending on your investment situation, some people can't. Right. Uh, that's a way to get exposure basically to physical Bitcoin because the company is basically levered to the hill with it. Um, without actually having to, you know, go through some of the regulatory concerns. Uh, futures contracts are out there now. Not the best way to get exposure just because of the rollover effect. You'll eventually, you know, lose percentages. Um, and then there's G- uh, GPTC, which is the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. Yeah. And now that was in the uh, news a lot with Bitcoin because the discount to NAV on that trust, so the, the net assets were... It was trading 45%, negative 45% below net asset value of their Mm -hmm. Bitcoin. Um, And a lot of that had to do with uh, the collapse in the whole crypto market was what happened uh, in 2021 was there was a a positive ARB in that Grayscale Bitcoin trust because everyone wanted to get exposure to Bitcoin. So it was plus 30% or so. So a lot of the lending platforms, the Blockifys, the FTX, the um, Voyagers, they took customers' deposits converted it in the shares of GPTC to try to capture that ARB. Yeah. And then when the ARB flipped, because everyone was doing that, and there's a six-month lockup period, so you can't just ARB it right away. You have to hold it for six months. Once that ARB flipped to negative, yeah. negative 10, negative 20, negative 30%, and they're trying to pay out customer deposits of 5, 10, 15% interest, that's when everything collapsed. And so that's just, I, of, I never heard that that side of it before. Yeah, that's that's exact. That was one of the biggest things that caused those lending platforms to collapse because they had all this money locked up in GPTC tr- arb trade and they had to yeah. unwind at a negative uh, position um, because mm-hmm. customers were and they had to, so they were selling grayscale Bitcoin trust already at, you know, minus 10, minus 20, minus 30 percent nav. Um, and that's really what forced it down to negative 45. So People once it got down to there, people are like, "Well, if if Bitcoin and if they get a because spot ETF approvals, there's a lot of spot ETF approvals trying to, you know, become legal. Um, that that will close, so that 45% discount will close to zero once the spot ETF comes. So uh, it was at negative 45%. Now it's at like negative 12%. So yeah. that's still a way you can play um, the Bitcoin space. Um, it's a two percent management fee a year, so really. If you buy it, you kind of have, you know, five years or so of free fees. You could essentially say mm-hmm. so, but, uh, but that was definitely a big, a big part of it. And uh, as far as ETF approvals, I, I do think it's going to come in the next at least two years at the minimum. Um, yeah. You know, the, the SEC's already approved a futures Bitcoin ETF, which it doesn't make any sense. They wouldn't approve a spot. Mm-hmm. Um, and they've actually been sued in court and lost um, about that decision. So uh, I think the, the ETF approval is around the corner at some point. You know, BlackRock's even got their name in there. Larry Fink was just out on CNBC saying Bitcoin's a flight to safety. And I do think that's where Bitcoin probably fits in the next narrative, right? It was the, the super speculative uh, black market asset to the, you know, get rich quick. And now it's going, I think the narrative is going to more transition to, well, we're in a sovereign wealth crisis as far as currency wise. And that's kind of where we're headed. And I think that's where Bitcoin will pick up its next more mainstream narrative as a hedge against kind of the um, the fiat sovereign the debt crisis that we've kind of encircled the world in. But uh, but maybe that's a topic for another time. <laughs> Not true. I mean, I, I, it's, a, it's, a fam- it's an interesting tr- transition, like you said, you know, from, from this highly volatile, you know, speculative, you know, asset class that, that, you know, you got the, uh, the mongers of the world that, that despise 
but 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 others are looking at it now as as a run to safety of all things. So yeah. uh, no, hey hey, we love having you here. So again, Echo Trade we partner with guys like like like, like Zach here and, and Digital Edge Wealth Management. So so regular investors can get access where they typically can't. And you can check out his portfolios on Echo Trade and subscribe to the channel because we're going to be continuing to have you know Zach and, and the rest of our partners on here to talk about all things finance and personal finance and investing. So Zach, appreciate it, man. The digital currency Thanks. maestro. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Jeff.